Hello and welcome back to Living the Dream Permaculture. My name is Natalie and today I'm going to talk to you about flowers you can plant to attract pollinators into your garden. One of my goals here is to provide habitat and provide plenty of flowers for our bees, but not just our bees, but also native bees and other pollinators. Corn flowers are loved by bees. This here is a nice hyssop and this is my first year growing it successfully. It's quite a big plant, it's over a metre tall and it's medicinal but the bees love the flowers. And it's not just the anise hyssop, it's all the hyssops. So it's quite a big plant but it's beautiful, it'll be nice as a background plant and you can use the leaves in teas. These little marigolds are loved by bees and so are the salvias which are planted at the back. These are an annual variety and they come in three colours. So I've got the purple, the pink and the white. There was a fluke planting them next to each other. And also this, the yarrow. I just spotted a blue banded bee. Oh, the first of the season. Buzzing in amongst the salvias. Ah, that's so exciting. I have poppies in here, a few different varieties, and I've also let my um, broccoli go to flower. So the bees really do enjoy um, veggie plants that go to flower, especially brassicas, um, kale, radish, turnips, <laughs> all sorts. It's still a little bit shady in this part of my garden, so the bees aren't here yet, but they love these chai flowers. And here is a honeybee on the chai flowers. Always very popular, the chai flowers. And any other alliums that you have, like these leeks or onions, they're usually covered in bees. This is another salvia. This one is a perennial. It's called Blaze of Fire. And these here are foxgloves. And they are always ringing with the sound of bees and their little um, bells. Here we go. There's another tiny little pollinator there. It's just flown away, but important part of my garden. Natives like this gum flower is loved by bees. This is still in the shade this morning, so it's a little bit quiet, but when it is in full sun, it will be humming. So this is just a really small tree um, that's grown out the side of this cypress windbreak, but I really do love it because it is a flowering gum and flowering gums are one of my favorites. This is the orchard and obviously the blossoms here will attract bees and pollinators to the garden but that is only for a short period in spring. We need food year round. Which brings me here to this Tagasaski. This flowers through winter and is a huge source of food for my bees. Dahlias are planted all through my garden, not only for me, but also for the bees. Especially the seedling varieties, which is just dahlias grown from seed. Um, most of the time they have an open centre, so maybe one in a thousand will be a really nice dahlia. I really like this dahlia even though it's just a seedling. Um, but bees have easy access to the centres. Um, which brings them into the garden. I do find that my fuller ones, like this one over here, which is a known variety, I can't remember the name, has got a bit of a full, an open center, but even those fuller ones bring in the bees. They are one of my favorites in the garden, so big, bright, and cheery, and brings a nice pop of color to the garden. These here are my perennial onions flowering and the bees will enjoy those. Back there we have some more dahlias to go. Let's go have a look. 
My Cafe Olay is opening up, which is the queen of dahlias. So even something as full as this in the center will still get bees tucking in here in between the petals looking for nectar. So I've got some more seedlings. This one my mum gave me. Big, beautiful and productive. These ball ones still attract bees. Got some more pink ones here. Love it. So this should be a sea of color. I've got another one here. Another one of those purple ones opening up. Gorgeous. And the bees are happy. Look at that spider living in my dahlia. But sunflowers are another rich source of food for pollinators. These ones are Prado Red and you can see just how intense that colour is. But I've also got some regular yellow ones at the back there. I have some more brassicas going to flower. This one is Chinese broccoli and then a heap of leeks at the back there which will bring in the bees. Calendula is certainly a favourite for pollinators and bees. I often find native bees sleeping here in amongst the petals. So I'll pick them to put them in a salad and then I'll have to take it right back outside because the native bees are having a snooze. I often find lots of butterfly caterpillars living in here too. So these aren't the bad white cabbage moths. Um, these are a different butterfly which are pollinators. And they like to lay their eggs in the calendula flowers. Such a beautiful flower. And so easy to grow and it will self-seed everywhere. So I planted it along my border here to bring in the pollinators. And I've recently cut it back because it was getting a bit scraggly. But here you can see all the new growth and all the new seeds popping up behind it. Definitely needs a space in every garden. Here is another native bee on the calendula. So these are the ones I usually see curled up inside. Just there. You can see the bees in the zucchini flower. So they're starting to come out and start starting their work day which is nice I don't have to pollinate any of my zucchinis did you know that flies are pollinators too I often find really little flies all over my coriander and the great thing about coriander is that even off one tiny plant you can get a year's worth of seeds. So I always let mine flower not only for the pollinators but for the seeds that I'll be collecting to eat over winter in all my curries and Asian dishes. This here is pineapple sage and it hasn't started flowering yet. This is a wonderfully aromatic sage and the great thing about this is it's a very prolific flower but during winter when not much else is flowering for the bees just like my calendula so these have a place in my garden i have many dotted through it and it's here for the bees the beautiful flowers the pops of pink and the fragrant leaves but especially for the pollinators the bees love the nectar that this produces and it's such a rich food source even just one you can see how big my one plant is so it's such a big um, resource for the bees through the leaner months. This here is fruity sage, very very similar um, to the pineapple sage. Bigger flower, bigger hairier leaves, a beautiful fragrance still and also quite a prolific flower. Not as prolific as pineapple sage so if you had space for only one this one gets just as big. Um, if you had space for only one I'd go the pineapple sage because there are loads more flowers on here but if you have room for two, I'd get one of each. As well as all your um, herbs. So my mint is starting to flower, which the pollinators love. And so is my thyme. That's usually humming in bees. It's still a little bit early in the day. 
and then my oregano is also starting to flower loved by pollinators the rosemary now this pollen this um flowers late winter early spring so a great food source in those leaner times of the year definitely should have a rosemary bush in your garden or two or twenty my sage has been flowering since winter this is great for the bees um, it's great for cooking but also great for the bees bees love sages and salvias parsley look here we have a ladybug which is part of my pest control and we've got a fly there which is a pollinator but these umbriel type flowers are very important for pollinators don't pull them out leave them there for the bees got more sage flowering got lots and lots of herbs dotted through my garden I don't use that many herbs well, I, I use a lot of herbs but I've got a lot of herbs planted so um, I don't use as many as, as I have planted but they're here for the bees and this here is a lemon balm and that's also starting to flower which is loved by pollinators and I have one more rosemary bush down here <laughs> these are snapdragons and the bees like to come in here they nestle their way between the two Let's see if I can pop it open they nestle between these two flaps in the petals and they access the nectar in there I have a few of these planted around the place got more rosemary down here it's a bit of a hedge these are globe artichokes and there's a bee in there at the moment I use these to eat but I also let them flower for the bees let's go down into this bottom garden and see what else I can show you that I plant for the pollinators this here is lamb's ear and it started to flower for me for the first time but every time I walk past this I know, notice some bees on it and then at the back here we have a clary sage so another salvia and that is also very very popular here's a pollen heavy bee just on the dandelion flowers but she was over here at the um, lamb's ear just before Sorry. you can see how much pollen she's got covering her oh, where have you gone there you are so even weeds can serve a purpose in your garden they can feed the pollinators dandelion is such a wonderful weed um, it's edible it's medicinal and the bees love it if I get real close you might be able to see her tongue as she forages between those petals sucking up all the nectar and she's getting dusted in pollen pollinating everything it's pretty cool I have a few different lavenders for the bees I like the fragrant ones so I seek them out um, rather than those that don't smell but lavender is certainly loved by bees there is more rosemary there and let's go have a look at this plant here this here is borage and this needs a place in every veggie garden it does self seed readily this one grew here by itself from last year's plant um, but this is usually covered in bees there is another one that's a favorite so let's go have a look there for some bees there we go there's some bees in the borage I know I can always find bees in this spot and then right behind it here there's some comfrey which is flowering and the bees love this they find it a little bit difficult to get in the flowers so I noticed that they usually try and um, forage in the fallen flowers but they do also visit these um, flowers on the bush but this is quite a big um, plant as you can see 
that's just one plant it does get big and it will sell seed but it's easy to pull out if it does get a nuisance become a nuisance um, but it should be in every garden because the bees flock to it this here is perennial basil and this is loved by bees when it flowers so that won't be too far off and again we have a heap of leek seeds down this row so these leek flowers will be humming in bees in no time it's such a beautiful flower too so decorative some more open dahlias or seedling dahlias and the bees are buzzing around but I can't see any at the moment there is a fly on there feasting on the pollen or the nectar I'm not really sure but doesn't matter having it doesn't matter if you have flowers in your veggie garden look there's a bee down there now it brings in the pollinators for things like your tomatoes so nice to walk through the garden and see bees everywhere enjoying all the flowers that are planted for them there's another pollinator i think i think this one is a native wasp or bee of some sort it's amazing what a different time of day does bees are out and enjoying the leek flowers there's a fly on there too pollinating it for me so it's okay to let things go to flower sometimes not only can you collect the seeds but the bees will be happy for it and if you attract them to your garden you don't need to pollinate things like zucchinis and pumpkins and cucumbers and tomatoes and eggplant um, some of those things can be temperamental to fruit if you don't have bees in your garden. I believe this is verbena that was given to me. Um, and there's usually bees hanging around here. But so pretty and such a gorgeous pop of colour. I should stake that up. But um, it's a little bit of a habitat in here. I've got comfrey at the back with some tansy, this verbena, calendula. They love, um, they love the clovers too which are a rich source of nectar and then I've got the dahlias here and over here I've got a bucket of water and there are often bees buzzing around having a drink so it's really important to not only create habitat where you've got flowers and food sources that you need a water source too. I've got several buckets and dishes laying around and you also need to create habitat for those other bees that don't live in a hive. So native bees, things like hollow logs and bark and bare areas of soil. In Australia, we have around 1700 species of native bees and 70% of those native bees need to nest in the soil and if you're like me you mulch your garden really thickly because it conserves water it feeds the microbes and the worms and um, breaks down into lovely humus but it makes it really difficult for the native bees to um, create a home so by leaving areas of bare soil like my embankment for me provides an opportunity for the bees to make a nest I'm a little bit calendula mad, so there is calendula everywhere lining all my garden beds. But that's fine because in this garden here, I've got my tromboncino, I've got my capsicums, my eggplants, and then my chilies. And so these bring in the pollinators who then go searching for other flowers nearby. And all those flowers, all those plants, they flower and they all need a pollinator. I believe this one here is a toothache plant, which also um, is loved by pollinators just about to flower once it flowers I know exactly what it is but we're not far away from seeing what it is some more celery that's gone to seed I did cut them off at the base so they're just little scraggly bits but even things like those alpine flowers bees love those 
when my Jerusalem artichokes flower they will be humming with bees as are my um, tomatillos and then that there at the back this is cosmos it hasn't flowered yet but it's getting really close it should be open in the next few days and this is planted here especially for bees as is this sunflower this is a teddy bear sunflower you can see there's a fly on it pollinating away now, all things like this should be planted in and around your veggie garden to bring in the pollinators and that way you'll get higher yield and better fruit set let's keep having a look this dahlia is a favorite amongst the bees it always has many bees on it but you can see how this girl is searching out the pollen and the nectar even on the ones that have got missing petals she's in there working hard So I highly recommend dahlias. We've got them planted all along here. This one here isn't a dahlia. I think that's a cornflower. We'll see when the flower opens up Hey, I'm still new to a lot of the, um, the flower names, identifying them from their plant. I can do that with veggies, but not with flowers as much. And I think this is another type of verbena. I can't remember, but that is also loved by bees you can see that it doesn't matter that that's a veggie garden I've got tomatoes growing in there but i've also got a heap of flowers and i've also got basil at the front too which um, is still a bit small this here is black eyed susan so when that opens up that will be visited and I've got valerian, which is medicinal, but also for the bees. And then I've got a few other things, which I've forgotten what I've planted. But once they flower, I'll have a better idea. You can see, got all that comfrey there for the bees. These tagasaskis are full of flowers in winter, which the bees love. And then this is a Shasta daisy. So all daisies will bring in bees. This one's a really beautiful one and it's really starting to thrive. This is the second season I'm growing it. Beautiful big flowers with an open yellow center for the bees. You wanna make sure you interplant and provide variety. So in this little cluster, I've got chrysanthemums, I've got a couple of dahlias and some more dahlias that run up this pathway. I've got fruity sage, and pineapple sage and clary sage so there's a lot there for the pollinators it's important to not use any insecticides in your garden using insecticides in your garden are going to kill all the insects like they're designed to do so by just leaving nature to it um, or manually picking them off or using something like ducks that way you can have an organic garden that's not going to be detrimental to pollinators these pollinators are needed for 75 percent of the world's flowering plants so if we can all do our part and provide a home habitat food water and security for these pollinators then we can ensure a secure future for our children and our children's children i hope this video has inspired you to plant some things in your veggie garden for your pollinators and that it doesn't matter you can plant flowers all through your veggies it doesn't have to be strictly veggies i had that mindset for many years and it was only a few years ago that i realized that hey i'm missing something in here i'm missing pops of color and the fun and the and the food sources for all my pollinators so i've really shifted and i'm continuing to shift um, in planting more things for bees and other native bees and butterflies so that they have a home here and i have the beauty and diversity here too thank you for watching and i'll see you next time on living the dream permaculture